time to rise and shine Good morning, good morning, good morning I hope you're feeling fine Good morning, get up, get out of bed It's time to wake up, you sleepyhead Time to wake up, it's a brand new day And we can't miss out on that day to decay Get your day planned out to be at your best And you gotta make sure you got the right back test Wipe the sleep away, make sure you're awake Cause we don't have time for fat finger mistakes And ratio condos will pay the bills But you gotta be quick to get those fills Follow your plan to keep your pockets thick If that market gaps up, look for Uncle Rick Small gap down means it's time for a duck But if it doesn't set up, then we don't give a f Good morning, everybody We know why we came here today Now let's get to it Yeah Let's go Good morning, everyone. Happy Friday, January 26th. Hope all is well. S&P is down seven and a half. Had the PCE data this morning. Price danced around a little bit, but not too much movement. Price was actually, S&P was actually down about 25 or so overnight. And then it rallied up starting at about 2 a.m. Central. Uh, NASDAQ is down 83, Russell is up 11, Dow down 58, gold up 2, silver slightly red, notes and bonds pretty much unchanged, oil down a little less than 1%, natty gas down a little over 1%, grains all down about 1%, euro and the pound slightly green, Bitcoin up 3.5%. VIX up about 1%, sitting at 13.58. So based on where price is with NTT, I would not be entering a NTT trade at the open. But I will be entering my normal Friday AM Iron Condor anyway. Morning, everyone. Good morning. Also be doing JSPs if they qualify. And the one DTE iron condor, which will actually be the Monday three DTE. At about two minutes till the open. I'm just looking at my uh looking at my one DTE bot. I thought I had it set to take the fri the Monday options on a Friday. Now I'm not seeing it. So I may have to enter that one manually. And, and technically, I mean, if I wasn't doing my normal Friday morning, probably take an NTT at the open here, the way price is starting to push back up into the candle. I, I like to see it kind of in the body of the candle just to kind of get back more in kind of a consolidation phase, but kind of borderline. If I, if I didn't, if I, my other stuff didn't qualify, I probably would take one at the open. Well, Dave, I uh, there's a there's a setting. 
maybe it was in my overnight iron condor bot. There's there's a setting where you can set the range so it would be the nearest. You could set it between like one and three DTE in that way, and then it would take the nearest. There's the opening bell. And I I should have thought about this earlier, but I did not. So I'm going to have to figure it out here in a minute. Twenty two point four is the expected move for the day. So upside expected move a little above 49.11, downside a little above 48.66. Yes, that is it, Davis. All right, so my AM AM ratio trying to get filled. Build on my AM ratio, and that's on the 75 puts, 49, 10 calls, 35 wide. I don't have my one DTE set up correctly, so I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go ahead and manually enter my one DTE. Mark, it's pushing up. Get in the old school push. SPX just went green. Interested to see how much decay I'll get on those Monday options throughout the day. Seven point four. Sorry, guys, just got to do a little manual work here. Nineteen forty five is my stop. <clears throat> I'm 
My JSPs did not fire. According to Toss, the gap down was good and it would have, but Trade Steward is going to be a little bit off at the open. It's it's five seconds after, so it wouldn't have qualified, so I did not take it. Morrow, have you taken one on a Friday yet? I didn't take one last Friday because I was wasn't in front of my computer, but I don't think the decay will be as good with Monday options, but we'll see. Did you get anywhere close to the forty five percent profit target MRP? Okay, nice. So here's my AM ratio that I just put on, getting a little decay already coming in. 48.75 puts, 49.10 calls. SPX coming back down into red territory. So if I didn't get in at the open on an NTT, I would definitely be getting in now. But like I said, I just, I got the other one going. So I don't want to load up right on basically the same strike. So I'm going to just hold off for now. Fish, your entry you already hit 20%. That's quick. I mean, I am getting some good decay on this, on my initial entry not 20 percent but okay so much wider I mean, I'm already at 15% on my $4 wide, 3-2. It's like the old days. There's a decent number of times where we were hitting 20% profits within like eight minutes of the open. <laughs> oh, the good old days. Sorry to bring that up. I know that's painful for a lot of you. Was it three minutes? Yeah, that's, I knew there's some quick ones. Yeah, uh, Cosmo, yeah, I will, um, so, you know, sometimes I'll take it a little bit before it closes inside, but 
yeah, that's the idea. When I was kind of doing my manual back testing, I was obviously looking at past charts, so the uh, price would be closed inside there. But um, but I'm not I'm not super strict about it in real trading, but I do want uh, especially in a like this where there's candles are very short, you know, two two wicks on both sides. I probably would have gotten in either at the open or shortly after. Cosmo, are you a Seinfeld fan? I just watched an old episode of Seinfeld when... They found out that Kramer's real first name was Cosmo. <laughs> That's a good, good episode. Uh, the expected move lines, those that was a little script that White Tiger put together. Um, did I add that? No, I did not. I was thinking I added that to the course. Um, Ah, gotcha, Cosmo. Uh, let's see here. I think I can share it. Okay, I just added that script to the course, but I'll um here you go, Bumblebee. Brush, have you have you had a chance to watch that video? I talk about both those things. I just, I want it really, I just want the price to be more touching the candle, but just if you know, if you go back and look at the charts, you'll, you kind of notice when the candles are short, have long wicks. That's when price is consolidating. When they get longer and only one wick, that's when it's trending. So I like to, You know, I wait for price at least to be touching the candles. You know, like this right here would be an entry. But even better if, you know, price is really chopping because the, and the candles are short and short and wicky. The other thing I'm trying to figure out with the NTT stuff is, you know, like Chad, for example, you, um, you know, you get in based on consolidation for your first entry, but your second tranche might just be because price moved, not because price is consolidating. Right. So I'm trying to, 
I'm trying to decide if I want to do something similar to that or if I want to always wait for, you know, price to be inside my NTT candles for a potential consolidation. Do you, uh, I guess the, I guess the question for you would be what do you, well, on your, you know, AM number ones versus AM number twos or mm -hmm. lunchtime number one versus lunchtime number two, because your number two is always based on the price movement, not on it's based on your price movement right. out of center, not based on the actual right. price action of the chart. What are, are you seeing any more value on your number one tranches versus number two? Have you looked at that? What's so what, what, what's your question? My question is, does your number one tranche perform better than your number two tranche? Yeah. So um, that's what I started tracking on January 5th was the first time I actually started tracking that and not counting this week. Well, I guess I, I guess I really haven't tracked AM one and AM two individually. I've tracked just both of them together. Um, so let me look. I'm just curious um, if there's like, you know, adding that. So AM one. Yeah. So AM, AM one since January 5th, has had one, two, three, three losing trades. AM2 has had one, two, two. Okay. Yeah, obviously not a big sample size, but. No. What so, about L I mean, LT1 versus LT2? Let me uh, let's see if I can put this. Seeing if I can put this in the SPX still it. chopping within the first five minute bar. Uh, Anil, I don't need the trend for, for this. Cause I'm not trying to figure out I, I, the only thing I use the, the trend for is the, you know, if I was trading to, you know, trade bullish or bearish, which I'm not here. I'm going to put this screenshot in here in just a second. Yeah. That's what I'm trying to think about tomorrow is do I want to add to a position just because it goes out of center like if it once it hits one of my short strikes or if i only want to enter when price is in consolidation with the nt candles all right let me put this in the discord yeah kelvin there is a difference I believe January 12th is the day you can go back and read through stop losses, percent versus fixed till your heart's content. All right, just put that in the discord. You could kind of, that's just since I've been tracking. So you can kind of see the, just the reds are the, you know, how, gotcha. how many losers compared to winners. Yeah, so I mean, obviously, yeah, small data sample set, but um, it doesn't appear that one is better than two or two is better than one at this point. Right. Yeah, Ron, the NTT, just go to the uh, the day trading course channel. And the very, the very first, the very lowest post is the NTT indicators on a PDF with toss shared links. And I just use the candles for this purpose. The, 
Kelvin, the percentage will just end up being a tighter stop than it will if you calculate it as a fixed premium. Yeah, that's a good point, Mauro. That's it does. It allows it to when it starts to bounce around, it's bouncing, you know, after after a push, it bounces around and then I'm I'm getting filled on my profits when it's doing that. Yeah. I mean it's kind of kind of concept that I've used with short strangles and iron condors longer duration, kind of layering it at different price levels. But I always I go back and forth on that because you know you're 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 adding more exposure and price has moved, you know, out of your or you know, has moved. So if you know it there's the, there's kind of the the argument of okay, should you load up more in the area where it's consolidating versus after it's moved versus diversifying your range outside of where you enter. You know what I mean? It just, you, I don't know the answer, but. You know what I'm saying, Chad? Yeah, absolutely. All right, price coming down towards the lower end of the first five minute bar. Getting some good decay on my uh, AM ratio here. I've already trailed my stop five bucks. New lows of day. So we've kind of had a little bit of a push up and a push down. Quicker than, quicker than maybe some, you know, some days. So I'm going to just kind of start taking a peek at what premiums would be, how wide. As we're getting close to 9, 9 a.m. Central. Fire away, day out. PN, are you aware of how, how to upload shared links? Did you just click on the link or did you copy and paste it to upload? Should work. I just, just did it. Okay. Bumblebee or anyone else, did you try that shared link? Is it working for you? Thanks, MRP. I'll, I'll wait just a minute. Wait till after nine o'clock then. Yeah, Chris said it worked. Yeah, what's your question, Dale? You. Yeah, I'm 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 well aware of FOMC next week for sure. Yes, sir. 
I'm not scared of Jerome. You scared of Jerome? Chad, did you get your tires all fixed up? Are you are you mobile yet? Yes. Well, I have a truck too, so I have two vehicles. But uh, one got fixed yesterday afternoon after we got off the Power Hour live stream, and they couldn't didn't have time to fix the second. So this morning, I took the second in to uh, the discount tire at eight a.m. and dropped it off with them. So, so I've got three good ones on, and I've got my spare still on. And uh, when I pick my boys up today and bring them back here, you know, after power hour, go get my boys. We're going to have a tire changing lesson. <laughs> That's good. That's good. So, I've had that with my kids. Yeah. So, you know, the, I got to go pick the, pick it up and I'll drive my truck to discount tire, pick up my tire. We'll come back and we will, uh, before they go inside the house, we'll learn how to, how to put the new tire on. Yeah. I did that uh, this summer with mine, actually. It's a good lesson. Yeah. Don't you just call 911 for tire changes, Ken? I don't know that I've never called AAA. I just changed the tire. One thing I am going to do is I'm going to get myself an impact drill and leave it in my car and truck. So I'm not using a tire iron to take the lug nuts up, off and put them on. Yeah, well, right after power hour, you're giving that whole talk about that. I was driving home and I... <laughs> I literally just went right over a massive pothole and really? luckily, luckily oh. it's all good, but I was just like, Oh my God, this is get brutal. this, get, get, get this. So last night, you know, I took pictures of my car with both tires off each side and picture of my damaged tires. And I posted on my Instagram story and I tagged mayor Quentin Lucas <laughs> and said, this is unacceptable. Uh, $1,500 I've spent four different times from potholes. Guess what he posted this morning? What? His post this morning was to it here. If you hate potholes, you'll love reporting them and getting them fixed through the My Casey Mo app. Yeah, it's a there's a pothole app screenshot now. of the my Casey Mo app. Okay. I don't want to just report them. I want to get paid for the damages. <laughs> All right. So two minutes until what the home uh, home sales comes out. Uh, yep, pending home sales, 9 a.m. I mean, my a.m. ratio is already at 32%. Theta is awake this morning. Netflix pushing up. Yeah, they do Daedalus. I use Waze and they do they do warn you the potholes. Unfortunately, I didn't have Waze on last night. Oh, Waze, I didn't know that. Yeah, Waze is awesome. They give you a heads up on cops, potholes. Yeah, I know that. I knew, I knew cops. Not no potholes, though.
Yeah, that one DTE is decaying nicely too. Home sales higher than expected. Eight point three versus the expected one point five. Hmm. It's a big jump. IYR, the real estate ETF, dropped. So unfortunately, all these Bitcoin ETFs are like $20 stocks. I was hoping there'd be like a few hundred dollar one that would eventually get some good options on it, but it doesn't look like it. Doesn't look like it's affecting the Dow much. Doesn't look like it's affecting anything much. Nope. It's typically not a high impact type announcement. So we've kind of had ah, a little bit of an initial push up and an initial push down. Yeah, but really, ten, price hasn't moved range a lot. so far. Yeah, it hasn't really moved a lot. So let's start looking at getting in, getting one in here. We'll get the forty nine oh five. Calls, 48.75 puts, 30 wide. Fifty points wide on wings. Yeah, nothing else today. Uh, and then uh, next week, Monday is blank. Nothing on Monday. So seems like it should be a good Monday for zero DTE. Tuesday, jolts 30 minutes after the market opens. Wednesday, ADP non-farm employment. Of course, F FOMC in the afternoon. So we will not stream for power hour on Wednesday, but we will stream during FOMC. I believe that's on the calendar. Uh, yes, it is. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Thursday, unemployment, pre-market, ISM, 30 minutes after the market opens. Friday, more employment data. Free market. I got filled at six sixty. Six 
SPX near lows of day. S&P down 9, NASDAQ down 120, Russell still green, Dow still pretty much unchanged. So my OCO will be... Uh... 20%, 5.3, and trailing stop, 4.95. Nice wide iron condor to start. All right, my friends, I'm going to jump off here. Nothing else. We'll be back for power hour in today. Good luck to all in your zero DTE trading. All right, all. Have a good day. Chat with you soon. Later.